Good morning, I'm Dave Manis, sitting with Brent Cole and Chad Daniker this morning. We wanted to talk about short sales today. The reason we wanted to talk about short sales is because there's a preponderance of them in our market. We thought at one time that prices were stabilizing and that we were going to be seeing more equity sales. That is not the case today. So we're seeing a lot of short sales uh, and we've had good experiences and bad experiences with our clients. So we thought talking about what a good short sale is would be helpful. A good short sale is uh, a, a, an opportunity for a buyer to buy an excellent property at an excellent price. We've defined that at a savings of a minimum of 5% and perhaps significantly more than that. We also think that it has to be in a building that has value and stability. So we're looking for short sales in great buildings, not in the buildings where there's a preponderance of foreclosures and short sales are the exclusive type of sale. So, um, Chad, what have you seen recently and what are things that you think are important with short sales? Well, first of all, I think it's important to talk about short sales because we're really seeing foreclosures starting to dry up. Um, right now, we only have 20 foreclosures on the market. And it seems like the shift is going from foreclosures to short sale because the government's really endorsed short sales and is letting people off the hook so that the sellers of these short sales can get a financing loan uh, two years out once completing the short sale. So it really makes it a viable solution. Uh, for buyers today, for our buyers, the question is why would we steer our buyer to a short sale in today's market? And, you know, Dave's right. We're seeing short sales that are listed two, three, even sometimes $400,000 under, under what we believe is fair market value. A uh, perfect example, in the building that I live in, in Park, in Park Loft, uh, there was a property that was on the market for four days, listed at a million four. The listing agent dropped the sale, $799,000 after four days on the market. Okay, nobody doing their job would actually uh, put a mark, put something out there for a million four and drop it $800,000 without doing their marketing, without doing any advertising or anything. Um, so what's happening is we're seeing a really good opportunity here for people to come in. Yes, there's going to be multiple offers on something like that, but still, the actual selling price is going to land far under what we feel is the fair market value for the property. Um, you know, we're seeing that we're seeing really, really good opportunities at places like the Grand. Uh, Park Place recently, we saw a property come on at about $300,000 under what we thought was a fair market value for it. was it. amazing. We were looking at 18th floor and 21st floor properties in places like Park Place as short sales. Exactly. I, and I mean, literally, they uh, some of these had seven offers within the first four days. You're talking cash offers on many of them. But still, the final end result is that somebody got a great deal. Um, it does take some time. Um, we do have to exercise patience, but it's really important. We're also seeing uh, really good short sales in buildings like Renaissance. Uh, Southwest Corner Renaissance, Unit 1512. Wow, what an opportunity. You know, the best offer San Diego has and one of the best locations in the middle of the Marina District for just $550,000. Just an unbelievable approved short sale. Uh, many times we see short sales go in, the first buyer goes around through, and by the time the short sale is approved, they fall out. And it presents a good opportunity with an approved short sale coming on the market where you don't have to do the waiting. Really a good opportunity. Um, why would you want to? Why would you want to engage in a short sale and potentially get drugged through the mud on one of these? Uh, Brent, can you tell us a little bit about some of the things that a buyer can expect in a short sale situation? Yeah, you know, as a buyer, and, and you kind of mentioned it already, um, I think what we need to present to our buyers is that you need to have patience because the time frames aren't, aren't your typical time frames uh, with, a, uh, with a normal escrow. Uh, it can be anywhere from uh, 60 to 120 days before you get full lender approval once you've submitted your offer and of course the uh, the lender can come back with a counter offer and uh, you know it just takes a longer time and then um, there's also hidden hidden costs that can come up um, so when come entering into the process you certainly could have some, some surprises uh, maybe the second doesn't get settled and then the buyer has to come up with more money at the end so um, these are processes that um, certainly can um, be a surprise to the buyer so we try to lay that out in front and make sure that they know and they're aware that uh, they need to have some flexibility there so if if a buyer engages the property and say writes on it for six hundred thousand dollars and then the approval comes back at six hundred thousand but there's a uh, HOA deficiency of seven or eight thousand dollars would the buyer or the seller generally pick that up well it, it could be that uh, that the, the buyer actually has to pick that up and so it um, that's one of the uh, you know that's one of the the challenges with the short sale process and so even though you're still getting a great deal on the property you may have to come up with more money at the, at the end uh, to get into that opportunity but at the end of the day would you say it's a win-win situation 
it can be. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not always the case. So, um, again, going into it and having, um, knowing up front that uh, these are, can be the expectations that you could potentially have, um, I think is very important. It's what we do at Danica and Associates all day. We're working in the downtown buildings exclusively, looking at market values, looking at the short sales when they come on the market, and determining what value is. Our concept is that by uh, being involved with these transactions, both as equity sales, as short sales, or foreclosures, that we can point our clients in the direction of the best deals. Oftentimes, they are these short sales right now, if the process follows uh, the, the, the methodology that is laid out. Do be prepared for increased costs for things like HOA fees for a second mortgage or things like that because they do fall on the, sell, on the buyer almost exclusively. The seller usually comes to a short sale without any money at all and the buyer is, uh, is, is forced to take on additional costs and all of the patients and all of the other pot, uh, no, pitfalls that fall in the way of uh, an effective short sale. If you've got some patience and you're looking for a really great deal in downtown, please visit us on the web at welcometosandiego.com or give us a call. I'm Chad Yenneker. Brent Cole. And Dave Mattis. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.